Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, very good. And what happened? The other classmate? Yeah, I don't know. I was waiting for them. I said, it's very strange. Usually yes. we have somebody else, but usually we or, or somebody already in class. Yes, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how was your day? Uh, good, really good today because I um I have a good day because uh, we have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, work, but you know we have uh, one customer. This customer is uh, we have like a two months, uh, like a two or three months every day or every at least uh, three or four days uh, in the week. They buy me some uh, some food like a breakfast, a lunch, or uh, some dessert, dessert or dessert, dessert, and uh, yes, and some dinner is good for me. It's good for me. And they buy a lot. Yeah, yes. Or for example, um, we have a one. Um, uh, is as is is remember the ONG? NGO. 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 This uh, they do some capacity to the uh, many people, a uh, so, uh, uh, people, okay, mm -hmm. and they, uh, for example, they um, co contract to me for example for three months, what? two months, four months, every day, the Saturday to uh, let me see, so, uh, Sunday to Monday, but every day yes but it's good for me yes it's a good wow sunday too yes include sunday wow yes a lot right yes right but that's that's good for you or no yes no of course 100 percent but we have a, a a work and because uh two years ago and 22 the uh covid is is really hard for us because it's a, a, we don't have a, 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 a work or we have a one or two customer, but that really the sales is down like a 90%. Wow. Yes, yes. But so uh, um, mm -hmm. almost, almost closed the business. Yes, almost closed. Mm. Yes, but thanks to God, it's good. Right now it's good in the three or five months ago, the, the sales again, up up hey so this year is, is good is good yes yes okay hey that's excellent news uh sometimes it's difficult the business is difficult life so when you can survive that's excellent yes yes yeah but normally with a lot of sacrifice right yes I, in, in my case i don't say sacrifice it's like a effort 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 because sacrifice is like a like a dead for some oh. for, for someone or for something. But in my case, it it effort 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 effort. Effort is a lot okay. of effort. Yes. Yeah, a lot of effort is especially in the pandemic. In the pandemic, yes. many businesses, many businesses, they close. Many businesses couldn't continue. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's true. Okay. Well, it's great to see. We have many people connected today. We have Omi, Doris, Marvin, Roxana, Miguel. We are ready for today. Yes. Yes? Okay. So the important part is today we're going to be looking at, we're going to start with listening exercises. Now, the first part is that in TOEFL, you have many different types of listening. And the people say, ah, only listen. No, it's different functions. It's different techniques and strategies to help you with the listening. They are listening for main ideas. They are listening for specific information, okay? So you have to know what you're listening for. Always, always, when possible, read the questions. Try to read the questions carefully before the listening. That way, when you are listening, you can associate ah i am looking for i am listening for because if you only listen and then you wait for the question is very difficult now it's not possible for all because some questions they don't have the the question there the question is 
from listening, not from reading. So this is important. Today, we're gonna to learn a few of the techniques and the different things that we have in the listening exams for the TOEFL. Okay. Okay. So let's watch first the challenges or some of the parts that are difficult for the listening. Okay. Welcome to the listening section. As in the reading section, here you will find challenges about listening, about the listening section, two types of listening questions, listening practice. Okay. So we are also going to have the opportunity to see the types of listening. Here's a couple of them. Okay. Challenges of listening. When listening, you must concentrate and focus your attention on the passage. You need to be familiar with the type of questions on the test. Read and listen carefully. Answer all the questions. You may take notes as you listen. Okay. Now, it's very important not to get stuck. Many people, when they do the listening, they listen, ay, me quedé, me quedé. No, 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 you, that's, that's a problem. That You need to continue. You didn't answer, you select one and you continue because if not, you are not going to answer any of the questions. Here's some more. Okay. About the listening section. The listening section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand spoken English. You will hear parts of a conversation or lectures lasting from three to five minutes. Each listening passage is followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. So, you are going to have many different listenings. Some of them are short, some of them are long. The listenings begin from easy to more difficult. The easy listenings are the first listenings. Why? because it's normal conversations. Ah, how do you get to the supermarket? Or where can I find this information? Uh, and then little by little, it becomes more academic. I am going to the university. I want to learn about biology. And, and then more and more. Then you're going to listen, uh, like if you are in the classroom, like you are in the class, listening to a professor speak. And then it becomes more difficult. So it goes little, more, more and longer and longer and longer the listenings. The longer listenings also have more academic vocabulary, more complex. This is why it's important to have synonyms, antonyms, and not to get stuck because if you don't understand one word, no, you need to understand the context to make sure that from this word, I don't know, the word is new, but I can understand all of the ideas. Okay. All right. So we're going to begin with the first one here is just, just content and just purpose. We're going to learn a little bit about what is listening for just and the questions. Let's begin with just content and just purpose questions. Remember that the gist of something is the main point or key idea. Just content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. Just purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. So, what are the gist questions? The gist questions or the gist listening is main idea, okay? So, you can think about it like when someone orders a pizza. When the person orders a pizza, I call, ring, ring, ring. Hello, thank you for calling Pizza Hut. How may I help you? Yes, I'd like to, just this, the main idea. The person is asking for a pizza. Then we have other listening. Ah, the other listening is specific. Ah, what type of pizza? What was the credit card number? How much was it? All of these different things, okay? Okay. Now, all of these, okay, are the ones that we need in order to make sure that we can apply the two techniques to get the most points, okay? Okay. So let's continue on and watch. One moment, forgot to share. Ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like, mainly about, mainly discussing, why this is the student, or what is the main purpose. 
Here are two things to keep in mind when answering GIST content and GIST purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a GIST content question or a GIST purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the GIST content or GIST purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of GIST content and GIST purpose questions. Here, let me see, the professor, for example, you will hear, well, today I had hoped to show you some computer slides, but um, this morning when I popped into the lab to set up the equipment, I discovered that um, the projector needs a bulb replacement. Needless to say, we didn't have a spare. So today you get to see my drawings, <laughs> or should I say lack, uh, my lack of drawing skills instead of a nice computer illustrations. So please bear with me. You read in here, why does the professor say this? Uh, so why does the professor say this? To joke with the class? To ask the class for further patience? To make excuses for the situation? Or to encourage the students to make sketches? You should choose B because the professor cannot show the computer illustration, then therefore has to draw the illustrations. He would like the students to be understanding about this situation. Okay, so that is the idea of gist. Gist is what is the main reason the person is speaking? Why are they talking about this? Why do they have all of this conversation? Is not to joke with the class, it's not to make an excuse because, and it's not to encourage the students to make sketches, it's to uh, explain to them so that they understand the situation and to under, have their patience. Here is another one, okay? Here, who would like to be the man and who would like to be the woman? And that way we can read together. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alex. Okay, and? Yes. Okay, Nuri. All right. Uh, but uh, can you move down, please, a little bit? Dr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson, will you, uh, I need your signature on his per permission for, so that I can get into chemistry uh, 205 because, because my grade for the prerequisite course was low. Well, Bill, a low grade indicate that you don't understand essential concepts. Are you up to taking the course? I think so. My brother uh, kind of tutored my over uh, the summer. We went back over all the material. And I, I think I have a good grasp of it now. Thank you. You read and hear, listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. This means that you are going to hear a part of the lecture, not all of it. You're, in this case, we're going to hear, well, Bill, a low, integrate, a low grade indicates that you don't understand essential concepts. Are you up to taking the course? Then you read in here. What does the professor mean when she says this? Are you up to taking the course? So what is the meaning of are you up to taking the course? A, she is refusing to sign the permission form for the man to register for chemistry. B, she is concerned the man doesn't have the background knowledge to do well. C, she doesn't have confidence in the brother's teaching abilities. Or D, she wants the man to go back over the prerequisite course materials. You should choose B because the woman does not want to sign the form for the man if he doesn't have the knowledge from the prerequisite course in order to do well in the following course. So the reason the woman says, are you up to taking the course? is because the main reason is she wants to make sure that he is knowledgeable and is confident in taking the class. As you can see, what happens with the listenings? The listenings are focused in academic, academic situations. Okay. And remember, that is the idea, okay? It's not, oh, do you have a cup of coffee? Uh, I'd like to order uh, tacos. No, this is the everyday. 
all of the exam, all of the tests is for academic purposes. That is the focus. So okay. most of the listening is going to be in this focus also. In this moment, do you have any questions? No, not right now. No? Sure, it's clear. No. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go on to the detailed questions. Now let's talk about detailed questions. Detailed questions ask you about information that is stated in a small part of the passage. They generally focus on the who, what, when, where, and why. Detailed questions usually take one of these formats. According to the paragraph X, occurred because, according to paragraph X, which is true of, the author's description of, mentions which of the following. There are two major traps that people fall into on detailed questions. Both of them can be avoided if you're careful not to choose an answer simply because it contains keywords from the passage. The first trap is to choose a true statement that was contained in the passage, but that doesn't answer the question. The second mistake people make is to accidentally choose an answer that contains a lot of words from the passage, but actually it states a different idea or changes the relationships between things. For example, sleeping makes me happy is very different from happiness makes me sleep. Let's work on a sample question. Now, why is that important? That's important because many people, they say, I, I, the time, the time, the time. And then they, ah, this has, the, I'm looking for five words and this has three of the words. No, make sure that you read the answers because only the answers can change with one word. So the idea is to make sure that it's clear what they are asking you and what you need to respond. Okay. Question. Listen to the audio program about a conversation and try to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? So for you, what is the man doing when he says that? Letter C. Letter D. One letter C, one letter D, uh-huh. Letter D. Letter D. And the others, and the others. I you only listen to three people. <laughs> letter D. Okay. Letter D, all right, let's see. Were you able to get it? That's right. By him using a tag question at the very end, we understand he's confirming his understanding about what the woman told him. Therefore, choice D is correct. Now, why? Because they don't check grammar, but they use grammar. When you use, for example, TED questions, this is the information at the end. Um, are you? Did you? Alexander, you had a great day, didn't you? I am only confirming information. If I put at the beginning, did you have a great day? I am asking information. This is part of the grammars of the difference between different types of questions. That's why it's important to listen and be clearly. Many people don't have the focus to do one or to do 30 minutes of listening, for example. <gasps> I know. I, 
No, you need every time not to get distracted. One question, focus. Next question, focus in the next. Don't think, don't think, I, I forgot the last question. No, you forgot, you bad, whatever. Is Go on to the next because you need to stay focused in every question mm -hmm. because in this moment, you, I gave you a lot of time, but in the reality, no. Half, you have 10 seconds, 10 seconds for all, and then the next question, 10 seconds and the next. The time is fast, okay? That's why it's important to practice staying focused. Teacher, I have a question. Yes, of course. In the TOEFL exam, uh, the listen is one time. Only one time. Only one. Yes. Oh, when when I, yes, for in at the university when when you make a test about listening, it's three times. Yes, it's not it's not the real life. And, and because <laughs> the, no, no, because it's that in the university they help you, like in the school. In here, yeah. I put again. But it's not the real in the real life in the real exam only one time. That's why I say we ha you have to practice like a conversation. Imagine okay. you go you go to an event, you you are looking at you are looking at uh, 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 at Obama. Obama is speaking. Nelson Mandela is speaking. No repeat, repeat. No one time and you listen, you listen, you understand, you understand. So the same thing in the TOEFL only one time all of the exam. The exam short, the exam middle, the exam long, five minutes. Imagine some listening, five minutes and only one time. And you have to understand everything and remember all the information. That's why the first technique, read the questions. So you identify, you focus what information you need to remember. But if you try to remember everything, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to remember everything. Mm -hmm. Even even in Spanish, even in Spanish, the people blah 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 blah. Y después, ¿y qué dijo? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Mm -hmm. it, it happens. I know many students. You have classmates in the high school, in the university. They, they in this moment they explain, and in this moment they are asking. ¿Y entonces qué vamos a hacer? No. And this is in Spanish. Imagine in English. Mm -hmm. That's why you. In the moment is for the distractions. This is why it's important to stay focused. Okay. That's it. That's a detailed question. All right. You ready to practice? It's okay, the techniques? Okay. Okay. So here we have, well, I think that was the last one. Let me make sure. Yes, the detailed questions and this, both of them are checked. Okay. So now we're going to do sample questions. We're going to try some of the questions like in the TOEFL. In the TOEFL you have, many times you have a little picture and you're going to have a listening. And then you have to answer. The begin like all, begin easy. The gist or the main ideas. What is the main idea of the conversation? What does the speaker mainly discuss? It's important, read the question, read the answers because you have to be quick. So we're going to do the same thing. You ready? Okay. Okay. Listen to part of a lecture from a history class. William Cody. Well, you probably know him as Buffalo Bill. Okay, so, William Cody became an American showman and founded the Great Wild West Show. That was in 1883. He traveled around Europe with other famous people that you probably have also heard of, like people such as the sharpshooter Annie Oakley and the Indian chief Sitting Bull. This Wild West Show traveled, as I said, around Europe and performed for many heads of state like the Queen of England, Queen Victoria, the show was featured at her Golden Jubilee celebrations, and the Tsar of Russia, that would have been the Tsar uh, Alexander III. His father, Alexander II, had been assassinated in 1881, so Alexander III would have seen Cody's show. Four, what is the talk mainly about? 
What's the talk mainly about? Buffalo Bills will with show. Okay. Yes, do, you, do we agree? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Listen to part of a lecture from a music class. Just before the turn of the 20th century, a new musical form captivated America, and that was ragtime. I suspect you've all heard of ragtime. The main feature of ragtime is its syncopation. Syncopation. You know how a waltz has a beat of one, two, three, one, two, three, and a polka has one, two, three, four. These beats are regular, but in ragtime there's syncopation, a displaced beat or accent. Traditional strong beats become weak and vice versa. Weak becomes strong, or the beat isn't evenly spaced but comes a little earlier than expected, or later. Although ragtime had its start in 1897 with William Krell's Mississippi Rag, and I'm going to be playing that for you in a moment, it was Scott Joplin who popularized the rag with his Maple Leaf Rag. We'll hear that one as well. Now, it was John Philip Sousa, best known for marches, actually, who began to feature rags in his band concerts in America and Europe. And by the early 1900s, ragtime was the most popular musical art form in America. Okay, now let's listen to I'd Like to Play a Few of These Pieces I've Been Telling You About. 7. What Does the Speaker Mainly Discuss? So, what does the speaker mainly discuss? That's it. Okay. So these are the easy questions. That's why I say these are the easy questions for the exam. These are the ones that only is main ideas. All you need to do, you don't need to understand what is ragtime. You don't need to focus. You this and this is very important because many people. When they do in the sex, ay, ¿y qué era eso? Tengo que aprender. No, no, no. You don't think in Spanish. Don't worry about it. You're not there for the class. You are there to do the task. If you want to learn what is ragtime, look for it after. No think, ay, and what is that in Spanish? What is the music ragtime? No, you continue on. You are there for the class, right? No, you're, you're there for taking the test, not to learn all of that information. Okay, so that's good. Let's take a look, a couple more. Okay. Here we have a little bit more. Here's the second part of the questions. Remember, what is the second type of questions? Is where they repeat and they ask you, why did he say that? Why did she say that? This is going to be questions numbers three, four, five. Look, we have here you need four questions. What is the important? Read the question first. Always read the question first. Read the question first. The questions are, why does the professor say this? So now we need to know that we, all of them, look, why does the professor say? Why does the professor say? Ah, so all of the questions is not the focus, is not the student, but the focus is the professor. This help us to have our listening. Yes, the students say, okay, it's good, but not necessary. the student is necessary why this professor is speaking. That's going to be the focus. Exercise L22, identifying the speaker's purpose. One, so does competition promote success? Think about it. Does competition promote success? Well, uh, doesn't that depend on what you consider, uh, how you define success? So if you define success as beating your rival, then yes. But if you define success as finding satisfaction in relationships, 
Possibly, very possibly, competition is detrimental to success. Why does the professor say this? Think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Two. Too In late. looking at the teeth of skeletons from the uh, Mesolithic period, it was found that those from Northern Europe had fewer cavities than those from Southern Europe. Why? Simple. Diet. The breakdown of non-carbohydrate foods like meats and fish doesn't form acidic byproducts, whereas carbohydrates are karyogenic. Uh, you know, caries, cavities. In other words, causing tooth decay. Carbohydrates, especially the sugars, are karyogenic. They produce acids that destroy teeth. Why does the professor say this? You know, caries, cavities. In other words, causing tooth decay. Mm -hmm. Letter e. A. Okay. Three. Think about how you prepare for your courses. You read the textbook, take notes during your lectures, you try to learn the concepts. Then you take a test, one that supposedly shows that you've gained that knowledge. But if you get the answer wrong, does that mean you're wrong? Well, yes. If I get the answer wrong, then I didn't know the concept or didn't understand it, right? I, I suppose I could have misread the question. It might mean the question was badly written. It could be any of those things. But I want you to look at this in a different way. When we study the way children gain language, we see certain steps, some of which appear as if the child is regressing in language acquisition instead of progressing. Let me give you an example. When a child has acquired a certain amount of language, she uses the form, I went, correctly. But later in her language development, she starts using the ungrammatical form, I goad, a word that doesn't exist in English. The child has probably never heard anyone say that. This, by the way, can be very unsettling for parents. But after a while, the child goes back to using the correct form. Now, this is a natural progression in child language acquisition. So, with this in mind, think about a test you didn't do well on. Now, the incorrect answers you chose were they an indication of where you were in the process of understanding particular concepts? In other words, maybe they were correct in terms of the stage of your learning. Does that mean, Dr. Blake, that when I fail your final, I'll get a pass? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Tom. Why does the professor say this? But I want you to look at this in a different way. Letter D. Yeah, letter B. D. D. Okay. Four. Well, we've been rock climbing together now on several occasions, and I think everyone has made excellent progress. So, with that in mind, I thought you might be interested in a special climbing workshop at the State Park Climbing Center. The thing that really strikes me is the people who will be leading the workshop. Jim Brown, for example, you know, one of the most experienced rock climbers in the world today. I hope that you'll be able to arrange to attend. I'm sure that participants in the course will gain a great deal of confidence and refine their techniques. So, here are the details. The group's size will be limited, so everyone will be given lots of personal attention. The cost for the weekend, including accommodations and food, is $300. There will also be an extra, but small, a small charge for equipment for those participants who don't have their own gear. And, um, a $30 non-refundable deposit is required by the end of next week, with the balance, the balance should be paid by July 20th. I do urge everyone here to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. So, if you can register, I'll be handing out application forms after our climb this morning. 
return the form and the deposit to my office as soon as possible. Why does the professor say this? The thing that really strikes me is the people who will be leading the workshop. There is C. There is C. C. B. B. C. There is C. 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 Okay. All right. Very good. And the number three? Right here? No, the number three? Uh, yes. Uh huh. This one. Oh, letter D. Okay. Letter okay. D, number four, letter A, letter D, and letter C. Now, the important also, this was correct, the ragtime and Buffalo Bills, of course. Now, as you can see, the listening is not going to be easy. The listening is probably usually the most difficult part of the test for most people because in the reading, if the person read quick, reads quickly, or if the person is not sure, they can read again. You have the opportunity to go again, but in mm -hmm. listening, you don't. You didn't understand, you didn't understand. You, I, did this, I, you got distracted, you got distracted. The, the exam continues because it's for everybody the same time. If you notice the listening, have a few seconds, you analyze, you think. Now, the important is, if you answer the question, let me give you the technique. This is very, is going to help you a lot. So imagine here, I answered number three. Okay, I answered number three and I'm waiting for the next listening. No, no waiting. I am working. I am already reading the next question. I am, or I answer the question. I am already reading the next question. Even when the person begins speaking, I read. This is important because the listening information is not the, few for the first few seconds. So when you have the time, when you answer the question, it's important, read the next question, read the next possible answer. That way, when you're listening, ah, okay, I'm listening for this. I'm listening for the main idea. I'm listening, it's going to help you. I'm listening for the topic. I'm listening for the different situations. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. We're ready to practice again? Okay. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Try another one. Okay. Listen to part of a lecture from a history class. William Cody. Well, you probably know him as Buffalo Bill. Okay, so... William Cody became an American showman and founded the Great Wild West Show. That was in 1883. He traveled around Europe with other famous people that you probably have also heard of, like people such as the sharpshooter Annie Oakley and the Indian chief Sitting Bull. This Wild West Show traveled, as I said, around Europe and performed for many heads of state like the Queen of England, Queen Victoria, the show was featured at her Golden Jubilee celebrations, and the Tsar of Russia, that would have been the Tsar, uh, Alexander III. His father, Alexander II, had been assassinated in 1881, so Alexander III would have seen Cody's show. 4. What is the talk mainly about? Mm. A. 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 Okay. okay. Listen to part of a lecture from a music class. Just before the turn of the 20th century, a new musical form captivated America, and that was ragtime. I suspect you've all heard of ragtime. The main feature of ragtime is its syncopation. Syncopation. You know how a waltz has a beat of one, two, three, one, two, three, and a polka has one, two, three, four. These beats are regular, but in ragtime there's syncopation, a displaced beat or accent. Traditional strong beats become weak and vice versa. Weak becomes strong. 
or the beat isn't evenly spaced, but comes a little earlier than expected, or later. Although ragtime had its start in 1897 with William Krell's Mississippi Rag, and I'm going to be playing that for you in a moment, it was Scott Joplin who popularized the rag with his Maple Leaf Rag. We'll hear that one as well. Now, it was John Philip Sousa, best known for marches, actually, who began to feature rags in his band concerts in America and Europe. And by the early 1900s, ragtime was the most popular musical art form in America. Okay, now let's listen to I'd like to play a few of these pieces I've been telling you about. 7. What does the speaker mainly discuss? Mm. It's letter A. C. Letter C. So letter C. Two... Well, we have two different answers, okay? We're going to see. One of them is correct, the other one not. Okay. Listen to part of a discussion in an environmental science class. It's now well established that our planet's protective ozone layer has been thinning in recent decades. This ozone layer lies between 15 and 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface and absorbs ultraviolet rays emitted by the sun. You all know about using skin creams and sunglasses for protection against ultraviolet rays. The thinning of the ozone layer, the loss of ozone is caused because artificial chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, combine with the oxygen atoms of the ozone. So every oxygen atom that combines with CFCs, this chemical reaction between CFCs and oxygen is what is um, how the amount of ozone is being depleted. Um, this ozone depletion has serious consequences because the more ultraviolet light reaches the Earth, the Earth's surface, the more damage it causes in DNA in humans and animals. The most well-known effect of this is the recent dramatic increase in skin cancers. So who's responsible for creating these CFCs? I mean, we've known about this for a long time. Isn't something being done about it? Well. To answer your first question, um, who's responsible? Well, in a sense, we all are. CFCs are a main component of dry cleaning and refrigerating chemicals. They're also produced in various manufacturing processes and in nitrogen fertilizers and aerosols used in products like hairsprays and polishes. Isn't something being done about it? Uh, your second question, well, yes. Uh, Fortunately, CFC's use in aerosols has been phased out in most countries. But these chemicals are dispersed in the lower atmosphere where they can linger for years before migrating to the stratosphere where the damage is done. Dr. Alameda, this all sounds very pessimistic. Haven't there been international agreements to phase out CFCs? Yes. In fact, since 1985, several international conventions have produced agreements. So, uh, would you say you're optimistic about the future, uh, the future uh, of the ozone layer? I would say that, that I'm guardedly optimistic for the long-term future. It's true that the various agreements are beginning to take effect. The problem is that it takes many years for the CFCs to disperse. And the fact is, not all countries are enthusiastic about phasing out their production for economic reasons. However, it's generally hoped that the ozone layer will recover completely by the year 2060, if we all abide by the international agreements. Number three. A, letter A. Letter A, yeah. Mm -hmm. And number four? Continuous dry cleaning company. A. Letter A. Mm -hmm. A. A, okay. All right. Here we go. Very nice. 
number four was correct. Here, according to the professor, how do the CFCs get into the atmosphere? They are released through some products and processes. They are not that they are chemical reactions caused by ultraviolet. Ah, uh, okay. Uh huh. So they go into the atmospheres because they use them in dry cleaning and they use them in aerosols and others. So they are used in products, not okay. the chemical reaction. Okay. Here, correct is letter C, not letter A. Okay. It became popular because of John Philip Sousa's marches. And then they say, ah, he popularized the music here. So that is what is the ragtime according to musical form that became popular in that time. And then this one, yes, when joke, uh, when Cody started the Wild West show. Okay. Okay. Now, as you can see, the listenings are not short. The mm -hmm. little, the first one little, and then suddenly you are listening and listening and listening. And then I know you, it's a lot of information. That's why it's important. What information are you listening for? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why it's very important. Always focus in what it is that you're going to have. Okay. So okay. in this moment, I want you to listen to your partners. I want you to talk to your partners. We're going to take a moment and you're going to tell your partners three things. Okay. We're going to talk about our future plans. Today's Thursday. We don't have class tomorrow, but we're going to talk to our partners about our plans for Saturday and Sundays. What are our routines? Listen to your partner. No return. I, I don't remember. That's, that's your problem. No, no, no. I don't remember. Take notes. Write it down. That way you start to practice the skill to develop listening comprehension. What is your partner going to do? What does your partner usually do? And what would your partner like to do? Three things. Okay. He's going to do, usually does, and would like to do. Okay. The same for you. As an example, well, um, this weekend, I'm going to go to San Vicente with my family because it's my wife's birthday. I usually stay home and go to the supermarket or the market and watch movies with the family and relax. Um, if I had the opportunity, I would like to stay home because I don't like visiting my mother-in-law. I really don't have a good time when I, and that's it. The same thing. You're going to talk about plans, routines, and conditionals. Plans, routines, conditionals. Any questions? No. Any vocabulary that you that you need? No. 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 no? Okay. Let's take a moment with our partners. Let's go.
Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you understood from your partner. Plans, routines, would like to. Oh, Mr. Marvin Calix. She, he told me, hey, the next time he going to go uh, at lunch with a friend, they have a, 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 a long time uh, that no meeting with their, with they. And usually is a, a busy man because all time they try to uh, repair some stuff in, in his house. Is it not exist a, a problem in his house? He create the problem <laughs> because the, 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 the day is, is, is all time is, will be easy. And um, uh, it's, it's so it's like 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 me in this in this part in the next, in the next part because uh, he enjoyed that climb to the mountain and sit at the top of the mountain in the uh, receive the, the the air and and feel the peace and the is is a good really good okay excellent excellent any someone else no. no, no. Okay, guys, in that case, I hope you enjoy your weekend, relax. Don't worry, on Monday, we're going to continue again with listening to see if you remember the different techniques and practicing to make sure that we can improve better, okay? Okay. Okay, teacher. All right. Thank okay, you, guys. See you. Have a nice see weekend. You, Bye. See you, Marvin. Bye. See you, Marvin. See you, teacher. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night.